on the road again. No, that's not my that's somebody else. I'm always on the road. I'm always headed somewhere. Segment number twelve. Yes, sir. In the year of two thousand fifteen. Good God Almighty, that's a January fifteenth. Yeah. Is today. One, one day from tomorrow. Yep. Which is somebody's birthday in this room. Oh. It's you. Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where I left off was kind of going back down to Louisville for the first time, making some noise down there, and I'll come. I'll get back to that in a second. Went back to New Jersey, where I'd moved out to. I had gotten married in uh, part of in the early seventy, and we eventually left New York with all that stuff that went on, and we were down in we were in Interlochen, New Jersey, and my wife had made friends with people across the street that were holy rollers, and I was not a Christian, I wasn't a non-believer, but I just wasn't a Christian or you know, whatever you want to call it. So I. Um, she, she had promised them I'd come over and sing I Heard the Voice of Jesus. And, of course, that made me really mad that she volunteered while they were asking me. But I go over and I do it, and it goes over really well. And everybody's so sweet. They're nice people. But there was a guy there, an Arthur, who was a big time, had a big hit book out called Ben Israel. His name was Arthur Katz. And Arthur had a couple of big sellers, but that was the big one. He was a Jewish guy that had converted to Christianity. Well, anyway, Adrian also connived that one together, and he ended up spending the night with us. So he goes over to our house, and he she excuses herself and leaves us by herself. And I'm not going to tell the story. I'll let it. But he basically... Uh, like Jacob and the angel, he wrestled with me at about three in the morning to get me to finally give my life to God, to Jesus. And the, the way he did it was pretty incredible, and the way it all came out. And it was and involved just, your song. Yeah, and involved voice of Jesus. And, and the bottom line is it's something that was necessary for me at the time. It gave me that extra strength to, you know, to, to, to try to kind of deal with what was going on. Am I correct in in thinking? Because I think I remember us finding out, or you finding out. Are there two other people that you know who were following the the religion of Judaism who converted, and you, that song had something to do with it? Your recording of that. Yeah, song? but later. I mean, yeah. Lou, Lou I Mar mean, over your life. Yeah, Lou Mar that's Lou pretty Mar darn Mar Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the producer of that song. What he's he's now a Christian. Mm. And there is another one, but I'm not remembering. Yeah, I can't remember. I know it's not Mike was. Post, so <laughs> I'm not sure who it is. Uh, but anyway, um, that all that all said, you know, I kept kind of hanging around there, and I'd gone down to Louisville, <clears throat> and mainly to get away from Adrian. Adrian had a lot of problems. And that was your first wife. Yeah, and nobody yeah. called it bipolar stuff then. I, what do you say they called it? Uh, Somebody. Oh, well, bipolar, it was called manic depressive then, but yeah. we don't know what her but problems she, were. But she, you know, when I was on tour of the Moody Blues for 41 days, she charged $39,000 on credit cards. And what year was that? 1970. So that's the equivalent It'd be like 300000 now, probably. So it's crazy. You want to go on tour? I'll stay home. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't making that kind of money now, baby. <laughs> but anyway, we... Uh, you know, I decided to go down to Louisville again to work, and this guy came up to me and said, would I be interested in doing a TV show? And I, I think he said doing a TV pilot, and I said, what did she look like? But uh, then that, you know, uh, dot to dot. I know, dot to dot. But, <laughs> you know, I said, well, sure, I'll be fine. So we set a thing up at WHAS-TV in Louisville to do a pilot, uh, we did it. I left, go back to New Jersey, New York, and later, I don't know how, three weeks, four weeks later, he called and said he couldn't sell it. I said, well, let me come back down. I'd met people singing in the, you know, at the Bellarmine College and different mm -hmm. things, and I, uh, yeah, we could get that album up there, Yeah, too. you did a live album. On but that. Uh, we did a live, I did a live album at uh, Bellarmine College that did really well, you know, for a, a, a self-produced and released you know it was a live concert and i sold it right on the spot but anyway i went back down and i'd met this guy named newell fox who owned nine burger kings and i took him into the tv station he loved it and he bought the show so i had a show the turley richard show whas 
1972. Now here's the, the neat part about it. That year is when the, um, um, I started to say the ACC, S SEC. the basketball league, the, S the SEC? SEC, yeah. No, it's the AMA, see, isn't it crazy? Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right, FCC, you're right. They allotted one hour of prime time to all cities, uh, especially small towns. That prime time could be either a syndicated hour they could rent for two half hours, or they could put on a show of their own. So they rented one syndicated, and they put my show on, 8.30 on Thursday nights. It was prime time. And the only thing that beat me out was um, Ed McMahon's uh, Mystery Theater. But it started at 8, so that we lost people because people back in those days wouldn't change stations in a half hour. So, but anyway, the show did really well, did a lot of local people, didn't have enough budget to bring some of the people that I knew. I mean, Richie Havens would have come in, Odetta, different people would have come in and done things, but um, the budget didn't allow that. And so the show went over really well. I met a lot of new friends, decided to move down to Louisville. And I've actually, for a couple of times, shooting down to Nashville and back, I've lived here since 72. And that's where I met the mother of my kids. That's where I met this lovely lady here back in 1980 when she was an 18-year-old girl. Her brother, who was a booking agent, wanted me to produce a rock band that he was uh, promoting. And I met her then, and we, you know, we got to know each other then. And 30-some years later, she's living in Phoenix all that time. We hooked up through, what else? Facebook. <laughs> and... Kind of funny how the world goes, but you know, my from Phoenix to Kentucky, right? Yeah. And I was still doing, Talk you know, still, <laughs> <laughs> still doing a lot of shows. Um, you know, from the TV show, I was getting a lot of private parties. I was still getting some corporate bookings. Uh, I decided later on, but I'll get into that about coming back into the record business after leaving, you know, Warner Brothers. Um, but pretty much that's all all that went on, just a lot of the con you know, one nighter things. Uh started playing around some clubs, um, trying to figure out what I was gonna do with Adrian and finally the we came down in seventy two and January of seventy three we decided to break the ties and so that was back on my own. But you kept the dog. Oh god, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> But I, uh, it was uh, kind of a significant time because it was my first time totally blind with by myself. Right. I had, you know, in New York, you know, I was, I still had some sight when I lived alone. And you've never been a good blind person. No. You basically <laughs> refuse to be blind. Never yeah. learn to do I anything. I don't do braille or yeah. any of that kind of stuff. I've actually, I was blind almost 19 years before I went to rehab. So that gives you kind of an idea. But today he types faster than I do. <laughs> Tells you who I was, you know. And, but, you know, it was my first time to deal with being blind by myself. And uh, it was a trip. It was, you know, fortunately at the time, they don't do it anymore. They had a company that delivered groceries that you could call on the telephone and fill in. You couldn't type it, but you could fill in what you were buying. And it would be delivered to your house. That was charged to you. And so... I was covering that thing, and then I finally started having different people. What else I, did you do after you went blind? Help me, you're looking. You got a, you got a little. Uh, oh, kind of, yeah. I did that still in New Jersey. I I got a black belt in judo, Kodokan yeah. judo. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Just in case anybody's thinking, oh, the poor guy, you know, can't yeah. take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm still really athletic. Pretty darn I'm, self-sufficient. I'm very strong and self. I mean, it's kind of funny. We laugh when people go, "Oh, bless his heart," or they say to her. <laughs> You're such a good helper. Uh, I mean, I'm self-sufficient. And, and, you know, if she wasn't here at all, I would have everything set up again, just like I did before. Or certain people get groceries. Certain people take me to this. And, of course, my son Adam is available a lot, not as much as he used to be because he's working. And, and, man, and my daughter Amber helps a little bit when she can, but she's got two kids. So, But, you know, Life is what it is, and I wasn't going to, as you know already, I don't stop. I don't give up from anything. I uh, kept thinking about where I was going to go, what I was going to do. Everything was kind of, you know, I guess in my head 
not knowing where it was going to go, except when I hear a harp and I think I'm about ready to die. Oh, <laughs> that, that's our signal when we have a minute to go. So you're going to die fairly. Oh, my God, I don't want to. Anyway, so that's the end of segment Way number keep me 12. That's for sure. <laughs> my book, again, is called Blindsided. It's uh, at my website, www.turleyrichards.com. Uh, you can see all kinds of things about me on there. The book, uh, it's an ebook also. Uh, albums, singles, and you can go all over YouTube and, and see things about me. So uh, Wikipedia will tell you some things. But life is beautiful. It's more beautiful now that Laura and I got married. We got married September 28th of this year. No, of last year now. Of last year. Yeah, yeah. September 28th, 2014. And, you know, I'm getting ready to do this whole new career again, coming out of retirement, semi-retirement. I don't drive a semi anymore. Anyway, thank you so much, and we will see you the next time. I'm going to go now.